Hey guys, my name's Dale, and you're watching The Factoid. Now the number of vegetarians and vegans has increased quite exponentially over the past few decades. And with numerous groups and individuals both pushing the ideas of ethics, health, and human anatomy as being reasons to make the lifestyle change. And I personally think it's a very honorable decision. But there's one problem that has bothered me quite a bit. For a large majority of these groups believe that humans are simply not meant to eat anything other than plants. We are all 100% meant to be herbivores, and not carnivores, or at least omnivores. But none of them could provide any reliable sources, referring to old charts, dietitians, and a handful of doctors that agree with them. All of which state the health benefits, but then go on to compare human anatomy with the anatomy of current day carnivores. It's literally like this. Hey, you. Me? Yes, you. You know what'd be good for you? Not eating meat. Oh, okay. Do you wanna know why? Um, sure. You don't look like this. Or this. Or this. Uh Oh, okay. Well, well, I don't look like this or this or this either. Shh, 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 pseudoscience. But what they should be doing is comparing humans to current day omnivores. So what this video is going to do is discuss why humans are meant to be omnivores. Though this video is in no way criticizing the vegan and vegetarian lifestyles. There are plenty of reasons to be a vegan or vegetarian. What they should just be saying is we don't have to eat meat. So with all that said, let's get started. First things first, we have to look at intelligence. Intelligence itself is one of the biggest factors, and humans without a doubt are the smartest organisms on Earth. And that said, it's important to understand the diets of some of the other most intelligent organisms on Earth. Some of these organisms are chimpanzees, pigs, parrots, dogs, dolphins, rats, crows and ravens, octopi, and elephants, just to name a few. Now the consumption habits of these organisms are, respectively, omnivore, 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 geared towards carnivore, but omnivore, carnivore, omnivore, omnivore, carnivore, and herbivore. What this means is animals that show extreme signs of intelligence almost always have meat in their diet, some exclusively. Elephants being one of the few outliers due to its size being one of the major contributors to its intelligence. Big body, big brain. Now, Professor Michio Kaku had an interview where he talks about the intelligence within organisms. One of the first things he brings up is eyesight. Organisms that are predators tend to always have their eyes in the front of their head, where organisms that are prey almost always have their eyes in the side of their head. And it should be noted that prey are typically never as smart as predators. He brings up the saying, dumb as a bunny and sly as a fox. And those two sayings have a lot of truth in them. If you think about it, more complex brain function is required for predators, hunters. Organisms that hunt have to worry about stealth. They also have to worry about strategy, anticipation of movement, psyching out the enemy, camouflage, and even being able to work with a team, a group, all of which humans have taken part of throughout history. If you're a dumb bunny, you just need to worry about your surroundings and running. Now here though is what bothers me the most. Being someone who's pursuing a degree in anthropology, I have a massive amount of respect for the field, obviously. But the people who promote this concept that I'm debating right now like to ignore anthropologists and scientists literally favoring the opinions of dietitians and controversial doctors and their observations. Now here's a video of one of the many videos I viewed of a lady who was talking about a concept that has been preached all over the internet. I cringe. Just listen. Now I'm gonna read some stuff to you, okay? So you can understand about you'll see that we're not meant to eat meat, okay? okay? Although some historians and anthropologists say that man is historically omnivorous or anatomically equipped, equipped equipment, tooth, jaws, and digestive system favors a fleshless diet. What? Well, you know what? The scientists who are paid professionals, just like the anthropologists, they say that the world is round. But from where I'm standing, it looks totally flat, so... <laughs> My eyes win. No, that, that's horrible. If humans were not meant to be predators and hunt and eat meat, then becoming bipedal was the worst thing that ever happened to us. Because it sacrifices speed and our ability to climb and escape for stamina. But that would greatly benefit hunting, which in turn supports the idea that being bipedal and hunting for meat are a key factor in the human design. If we were not meant to be predators, then our bodies would be designed to escape, for they sacrificed climbing in order to gain good stamina. I mean, a good long distance runner can outrun a horse. And this method of pursuing an exhausting prey has been done for thousands and thousands of years, and can still be seen in Africa today. Being bipedal benefits trekking and exhausting prey. I mean, bipedal movement is the reason why humans are all over the world today. They followed animals. And meat eating was one of the major reasons why early humans were able to live in northern climates, where there would have been no fruit. I mean, the Native Americans didn't cross the Bering Strait picking berries along the way, all during the Ice Age. 
they followed animals. Now, Professor Mark T. Ford, who has a PhD in anthropology, has dated meat-eating in our earliest ancestors to start around 2.5 million years ago. This is before humans or even the genus Homo even existed. But shortly after this, we find movement in organisms that would become the genus Homo. Humans, Neanderthals, and Homo erectus, to name a few. And they were meat-eaters who we find mass migration starting with, unlike their non-bipedal cousins, chimpanzees and gorillas, who never left their little corners in Africa. So lastly, I'd like to wrap up this video by debunking some misconceptions. Meat eaters have sharp front teeth for tearing, with no flat molar teeth for grinding. Herbivores have no sharp front teeth, but flat rear molars for grinding. As well as humans have no sharp front teeth, but flat rear molars for grinding. Well, first off, we're omnivores. That's not just black and white. You're not just carnivore or herbivore. You can be both. And that's not even true. This picture pretty much sums it up. Humans have a pretty well-balanced set of teeth. Organisms that are strictly herbivores have very smooth molars. Humans do not have smooth molars. They're a bit jagged, and they serve a double purpose. And I mean, our bodies have still been changing. Look at almost every herbivore and carnivore. All their teeth are just perfectly placed. But humans in recent times have had their teeth completely all rearranged, and braces have been necessary. This is because our bodies are adapting to the change of our diets trying to become more beneficial for our survival. But it should be noted that there are herbivores with sharp teeth that simply just eat plants. Meat eaters have claws. Herbivores have no claws. Humans have no claws. <sighs> that, that's not true either. I don't see fish with claws. I mean, if you look at a frog or a walrus, they're all meat eaters and they don't have claws. And you can also look at herbivores like koalas, guinea pigs, and select few birds that only eat plants and they all got claws slash talons. And they don't eat meat. But who's to say claws are beneficial? The most beneficial thing is intelligence. And intelligence has allowed us to turn our thumb into the most useful thing in the universe. It can sharpen stones. It can craft swords. It can assemble guns. And it can put together bombs. You don't need claws when you've got intelligence. Intelligence has allowed us to use seemingly harmless things and make them the most dangerous things in the universe. Meat eaters have intestinal tract that is only three times their body length so that rapidly decaying meat can pass through quickly. Yet, herbivores have an intestinal tract 10 to 12 times larger than their body. Same with humans. So, if you think about that, the meat is rotting in our intestines because it's not coming out quickly. That is completely untrue for humans. The average length of the human digestive system is just 30 feet or 9 meters. That would literally put us in the carnivore category. Now, for instance, cows have a digestive system that is over 100 feet long, where lions, on the other hand, have a digestive system that is about 7 meters long. And they like to say, because our digestive system is so long, meat rots. I don't know about you, but I've never gotten sick of every bit of meat I've ever eaten. But it should be noted that anything you eat passes through your body from about 30 to 50 hours. And the meat would be constantly be broken down by enzymes in your body it would be completely gone before it has time to rot, unless you're already eating rotten meat. But to top all this off, all those arguments that I gave you, and there are plenty more which you can check out in the link I provided, are from the American Hygiene Society. The Hygiene Society. But guess what year this is all from? 1970. God help me. Ah. I, I don't even know. So I feel this video has gone on long enough, and I feel my point has been well established. I left links describing both of the arguments on each side in the description. The information I used is cited by doctors, anthropologists, scientists, and archaeologists. And the information on the other side is from dietitians, a select few doctors, and a 1970s American Hygiene Society poster. Give me a break. But I want to re-elaborate one more time. This video is not preaching against the ideas of vegetarianism and veganism. I am 100% supportive of that, and I think it's awesome that people can do that. But to say that we as humans were not designed to eat meat is completely false. And I will support the paid professionals, the scientists, who put their life's work into that. And I hope you do too. My question for you guys is, is what are your eating habits? Are you vegetarian, vegan, you eat meat? What, are you, what do you eat? And with that said, my name's Dale, you're watching The Factoid. And remember, never stop learning. Thank you. Blue. Green, if you like my red. videos, please stay in tune for more. More videos on the facts that almost everybody missed. So technically, things like grass.